everybody does two things playing golf. The first thing is we move our body. At least we should do. Our body goes back, our body comes down, our body comes through. The second thing is our arms. Our arms go up, our arms come down, our arms come through. We all play our best, whether you're Jim Furyk or Brooks Kepke, or any of you, you all play your best when there's harmony between the body movement and the arm movement. That's when we play our best, all of us. You look at somebody who's got wonderful rhythm in their swing. You look at the people who are playing well on TV. It looks like a beautiful rhythm. That's coordination. That's coordination between the body turning and their arm swinging. When you've got that beautiful rhythm, when you get to the top of the swing, you've got all day, I go back to Shane Lowry again. I mean, Shane's got one of the best golf swings. Such a good player, Shane, and he's so underrated as a player. Um, but watch him come through, I mean, he's, he's so good. But again, he's got so much control over that club. And he doesn't even know it. Second nature to him. That's what made Christy Senior so great. Christy Senior had a lovely long, lovely long swing. Mightn't have looked aesthetically beautiful like Adam Scott's. But tell you what, Christy had more control of what he was doing than Adam does. You take somebody else like um, Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson's got a pretty lousy swing if you want to look at it in a, in a scientific way. But what he's got is unbelievable sense of where the club head is in space. Bubba Watson looks like an absolutely lousy golf swing, and it is. But man, is, he must have an incredible sense of where the club head is at high speed, swinging at over 100 mile an hour. He must have an incredible sense. He doesn't even know it, but he must have, because he can't swing with two, feet, two toes in the, touching the ground being all over the place, swinging the club like he does, and still hit it reasonably straight. It's because he's got incredible sense of where the club head is in space. And that's the key to playing this game, folks. Understanding where the club head is in space. It doesn't matter if you're a big hitter, a shorter hitter, a lady, a man, a low handicap, a high handicap. It's all about control in that club head as it flies through space. And you cannot do that if you're stiff-wristed, you're tight, and your body is controlling. Now you've, you've, lo you've locked your hands. You've locked your arms, you've got trouble. Do you take a practice swing? Oh yeah, take a practice swing, yeah. <laughs> As the older I get, the more practice swings I take. <laughs> um, so let me see. I don't want to talk too much because I want to keep things really simple. This is what this is about. I mean, this is not about going into huge amount of science. We've got the TrackMan here, which is great because what, what, I, what, what the TrackMan does here is it's scientific validation of what you feel. We never had this before. What we had before was a coach to say, well, that was good because, but I'm trusting what his eyes were. So I got my own instinct, what the coach would say. But the third element that's been added in over the last number of years is this baby here. This is scientific and I can look in a nap and he can look in a nap and he can say, Paul, that was two degrees more into out than the previous one. Or that was two degrees more out to in than the previous one. So the scientific validation, that's why this is a great piece of kit. It's like uh, in, um, it's like in, in tennis. What do they call the one in tennis? The, the which? Yeah, Hawkeye. It's like Hawkeye, it's validation. It's, before it was just the referee or the linesman, he said it was in or it was out. John McEnroe would complain like hell, but where would he be in the modern game? Because science will tell him. Was well, he going to argue with the computer, shout at the computer? Um, yeah, probably. But that's what's so great about, so, about it is science will tell you. It's got no personality. It's got no agenda. It's not trying to screw you. This is just science and time after time. Our level of golf absolutely to absolutely and what can I do? okay so everybody's got their own DNA of swinging okay and like I said before there's so many ways of playing this game there's no one way of playing it okay for example Rory McIlroy right plays with a big draw right his DNA is to hit the ball with a draw his DNA as a golfer is the club swings from in to out right probably by about five degrees, right? Four or five degrees. That's why he hits a draw. So if Rory McIlroy goes on this, and instead of being four or five degrees, he's only one degree. Now he goes, uh oh, that's a red flag for me. I'm, I'm too near, I need to go back up to five again. So he knows in his swing what he has to do to get it back to five. Vice versa, somebody could be five degrees to the left 
Rory's five degrees to the right. So you take somebody like, um, who's a big fader of the ball? Alex Who? Dustin Alex Noren, Dustin Johnson. Justin Johnson's a better example. Dustin Johnson, who's very much across it. He's about four degrees to the left because he cuts across it. So if he gets on this and the computer says you're zero or you're plus one, ha, it might be a good shot because he coordinated well, but it's a matter of time, his, day, his DNA. What it does is it sticks you to your DNA. And what it does is it establishes what your DNA is. It doesn't tell you what's right and what's wrong. The goal is not to get to zero. The goal is to be in the parameters of what you always are as a person. And some people are that way and some people are this way. And some people are in the middle. So it's validation and it keeps you within the areas that you need to be in order to play the, play the game and swing the club according to how you do it. Yeah? That's why it's so important. In terms of dialing in the numbers and all that thing, what a lot of the pros do because we, we you know, our swings are pretty good, but what it's great too is it's so accurate with yardages. And I know exactly to the yard how far I hit every club. And it's so important. I mean, that's, Dustin Johnson spends 45 minutes every single day before he hits anything else using his sand wedges and wedges. And all he does is he dials in. So he'll go, and he'll go 76. And then he look at the computer and the computer the, or the app that's sitting there will say 77. But he felt it first. So he's tuning in his feel with what, how far the ball actually went. That's where he's so good. Uh, what distance was that? 86. 86, yeah. I mean, this, I'm just flicking it there. That was only a pitching wedge. So it's all, it's, that, that's about feel though, you know? It's about feel. Um, I mean, I got a pitching wedge here. So let, let me see if I can hit a number here. Let's say if I can hit this 115, right? I know the feel I need in my golf swing. I would say that's about 117. No. 112. Okay, so my feel was a bit out. Now maybe it's something to do with the ball, but the ball... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, it's something to do with the ball. Yeah, on a range, yeah, because on a range ball, the balls are always reduced down. So, really, when you're hitting balls on a range, if that flag's 160, don't worry about it. Just work on hitting the ball because the distances will always be different on a range ball mm. to a chrome side. A range a ball doesn't quite go as far as the balls we, the brand new balls you buy in the shop. Say it was, it was the ball. <laughs> okay, I know people are going to their tea time, and but any questions? Yeah. Paul, what yeah. are you doing to get action on the ball? Action on the ball. Uh, you got to be good. That's the first thing. Um, so you mean you mean backspin? It's basically quality of strike, right? It's quality of strike and it's elevation, All right? So if I'm hitting, if I'm I've got. What club is this here? Eight iron. If I'm hitting an eight iron and I hit it, if I hit an eight iron, that's got no action on it because there's no elevation. I might be a good strike, but I got no elevation. So it's a it's a it's a quality of strike and the elevation. Yeah. Yes. The drill to help you release the club. Great question. So. Before he died, the greatest teacher in the world that's well regarded, whether you're Hank Haney, whether you're Butch Harmon, David Ledbetter, uh, any, any coach in the world, Pete Cowan, no matter where you go, they all have one common denominator. Every one of them will say that the late John Jacobs, who died two years ago, was the greatest teacher, was the godfather of all their teaching. Everything they learned, he was, he, he's the guy who broke the mold in terms of teaching how to play the game of golf. Lovely, humble man. He died two years ago. He lived in the south of England. Used to be a player, played Ryder Cup, captain of Ryder Cup, but then became best known for teaching. If you want to buy any golf books, John Jacobs is his name. He's very well known. Um, a lovely, humble man. Great teacher. And a lot of what I'm saying to you here is John Jacobs' teaching. I, I learned a lot from him. I got to know him very well. We were very good friends. He lived, didn't live too far away from me. I used to spend time with him. And a lot of what I'm talking about here it's like the Seve thing about when I never really understood in the left pocket, now I understand it. It's a lot of the things that he used to say to me, I didn't really understand and now I kind of understand it a whole lot better. And he always talked about release. And he always talked about using the club head. And he, all of this stuff is him. This is not me dreaming this up. This is me 
experience in so many different things and thinking that's that that's that's now that I'm kind of stood back from the game a bit that's what I see as being the has been the key so in terms of releasing the club his favorite drill his favorite drill was swinging with your with your ankles touching right so if you if I put my ankles touching like this right it makes me release the club now if I start if I start using my body if I start muscling it, I've lost my balance. So by having, by disengaging, like my friend who's 90 odd years old in Sunningdale, when you disengage your legs, that's generally when you start to use the club head better. So his, his biggest thing was 10 balls, 10 balls using that, and then 10, 10 balls normal. 10 balls this, 10 balls feeling the club.